Russian President Vladimir Putin, Alexei Druzhinin, Sputnik Kremlin pool photo via AP. At a time when Theresa May has found a warlike distraction from the unmitigated incompetence of her Brexit negotiations, the convenience of Salisbury must ring among her colleagues as the Falklands did when Margaret Thatcher was about to be clawed down for her mismanagement of the British economy. There is nothing like a good international crisis to remind us what fun it was to stand together when the bombs were falling and our young men and women were being killed on land, sea and air, UK will use, cutting-edge military to defeat enemies, the Herald, March 28th. It is quite extraordinary that the power of NATO should be rhetorically mobilized on circumstantial evidence which would have difficulty in a court of law, particularly given the unhelpful announcements by the Foreign Secretary. War is well understood by the peoples of the nations to which we continue to provide arms but among the great nations it is Russia, which understands it best with 25 million dead in the war against fascism. The cunning strategy of sending diplomats home when they are most needed for sensible discourse is reminiscent of every folly I have watched in my 70-odd years of living with the threat of nuclear catastrophe. We're now for the NATO alliance. And is it not nice that our Euro chums are on side despite our rejection of them? Where now, now that we've stopped talking? I am reminded of George MacDonald Fraser's description of the considered opinion that brought about the disasters of the Crimean War. The decision had been taken to attack Russia. The maps were on the table, H.M., yes. Pause, big place, ain't it? It is time our UK government learned history and grew up to realize that it no longer represents a great imperial power, but part of an offshore European archipelago which will be further isolated by its continued follies. The days of the loyal dominions are long gone. K.M. Campbell, Bankhouse, Dune.